A little advice. A little advice. Come on, come on, come on, yeah. Just a little advice. Just a little advice with Christine Little. Check it out. Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Little Advice Podcast, a podcast where me, comedian Christine Little, gives a little advice to one of my guests. It's only a little advice because I only have a little degree. It's a BA in psychology, but but I also read a lot of self-help books, so I'm like, yeah, I got this. This is episode number seven with Michael Blaustein. He's been on MTV's Punked, CBS's Person of Interest, Amazon Prime's Inside Jokes. He's a hilarious comedian. I love talking to him on the podcast and off the podcast. He just cracks me up, and please check out his Instagram. His videos are hilarious. We do start off like a little weird in this episode because I comment about how buff his arms are, but like I always comment on it, so he called me out on it and I was like whoa you totally should have called me out on that so that's funny and we talk about his fear of being mediocre LaCroix Johnson comes up again but his LaCroix Johnson is totally different from Kyle's LaCroix Johnson which is pretty funny to me podcast related if you want to talk more about the episode or the podcast in general please head over to the Facebook group and join the little advice podcast Facebook group okay you know, do that. I'll post links to stuff. I'll, I'll always post when the episodes come up in there. And um, I don't know, just say hi. And again, please rate, subscribe, leave a review. And I want to give a shout out to a few people who've already left reviews. Thank you so much. Uh, X Kimmy Gilbert X, Hetty Hogan, Jeno Smith 5005, Leon Nixon. Thank you so much for that great review. And Laura Girls 373. Thank you guys so much. I appreciate it. And with no further ado, here's episode number seven with comedian Michael Blaustein. Thank you for listening to A Little Advice. And we're on. Hello, Michael. Hello, madam. How are you? Madam. Sorry. This isn't a brothel. It's, it, that's, that's the thing that comes naturally to me, to say madam. Is that madam? weird? Absolutely. How do I say your last name? Blaustein. You have me on the podcast, you know how to say my last name? <laughs> it's hard. It's not hard. Blaustein. Blaustein. It's, just, it's very simple. We just did a show together, and I'm someone offended. said Blaustein. No, the host said yeah. blue some shit, and he knows me well. He's, See, he's it's like, not he's just all me. Australian. He's like, next, come to the stage, Michael Blue. They just Australians are the worst. Claudia, do you know how to say his last name? Yes. Okay, Blaustein. Yeah, for the for the people that can't see Claudia, there's other people in this room. Claudia, do you call her Chloe? I no. We have to call. He doesn't know her first name. I don't know. Okay, this is a terrible start to this podcast, and I apologize. I also want to say that Michael's arms are ripped. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> So my Why does that make me wildly uncomfortable? I'm so it should, and I apologize. Don't talk about people's physical appearance. I would hate it if someone's like, "Oh, your eyes are so beautiful," or whatever. I, ugh. Maybe secretly you're telling you're telling me that because you secretly want people to say that to you. No, I don't. Really? No, I was Why being was facetious that? with that example. I don't think so. I think that's deep in there. I don't want people to tell me Let's my eyes. Let's reverse this podcast. Actually, you know what? Yeah. If someone told me my eyes would, were beautiful, it would be better than them saying like, "Oh, you have a nice butt." Because that feels like I'm being sexualized and objectified. But beautiful eyes, it's like those are the windows to your soul. You right. have nice arms. But it's interesting. And because I'm sorry that I, I – you're right. It's totally fine. But it's interesting that you bring that type of stuff up consistently to me. But you I know, do. But, I right. ignore so – I you, But do. you – hold on. So you know that objectifies and you would feel uncomfortable, but yet you do it to me. Why? Oh, my God. Wow. I, I like, thought this was a deep podcast. I didn't know it was going to go – I don't know. It's just I sometimes I do this thing where I just don't filter myself. And, Which, it's, and that's the reason I love you. It's like this, like if someone's wearing a bright purple shirt, I'm like, hey, purple shirt, this shirt's purple. It's not yeah. cool. I need to chill out on it. And so I do apologize. No, you don't need to apologize. I didn't bring any of this up to apologize. I'm oh, I thought you said that it, would, it made you uncomfortable. Yeah, that. but I don't need an apology. Every, a lot of things make me uncomfortable. Oh. I wasn't searching for an apology. I literally, was, I literally wanted to talk to you about why you think that you is that, that. Was, is that the problem that you have? No, not at all. Oh, if okay. we can make it that. Do you want that? We can actually shift it to appearance when people. Uh, well, of, tell me. Well, tell me. What, what was the problem you came in? At? Like, what's your problem? Um, I feel like the. I feel like this problem is more interesting. The problem we were just about to discuss. Okay. But the problem I came in here with was that uh, being mediocre is it, it, like an insane fear of mine. Tell me more about that. Um. 
to to a point where it is um, debilitating. Like I can't if I feel as though I am mediocre or um, kind of like plateaued in a thing, kind of anything to be honest. I can't stand it. Like it, it drives me insane. How would you like define mediocre? Um, for let's, you. let's well, let's move back for a second. The okay. the um, my whole life. I have been very good at everything, but not exceptional at anything. So you're like a jack of all trades, master of none? Is sh- that? Sh- sure. Okay. But, that, but that's always been my like, you're like, oh, dude, you're really good at basketball. I mean, you're not great, but you're really good. Oh, man, you're really funny. I mean, you're not like super funny, but like you're funny. It's always, it's always been that. Is that, would you just find that as mediocre or, or is that something different? That, yeah, that'd be mediocre. So that's that's my like kind of assessment of what mediocre is. Okay, so your fear is of being m- mediocre, which you feel that you are in a lot of things. Yes. So you're fearful of what you feel that you are already. Correct. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it's just because it's like this. It's this constant theme I feel like in my life, where it's just been like never been able to get to the next level of something that is like an extreme passion of mine. Oh, okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's, it's, inf- it's infuriating. What do you think it means if you can't get to the next level about I'm yourself? Worthless. Okay. Like why? I mean, that's always been my mindset. It's not like a, it, it's a great mindset to push you, but it's not a great mindset to just like live in the mm-hmm. fact of like, you work, 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 and then you get, you get like you reap the benefits, right. and it's just like I work, 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 and then I feel as though like my, the stage I'm always at is never, the next level. Of yeah, that's that's the nature of this business too, and I, and I think, um, levels of success are obviously very subjective. Sure, extremely subjective. If you were to talk to another comedian, I pull off the street i mean not kyle but whoever else and they compare themselves to what you're doing they might feel me I, I would feel mediocre like i see you you're touring all around the world you're headlining you've been on tv you've done a lot of things so what is it that you feel that you're not reaping the benefits of of where you are right now or the level you want to be in it's a it's a weird it's a weird thing because i don't know if there are like I don't know if tangible things can make me not feel mediocre. And I think that's the, that's the issue because it's always like, okay, so you get, so you're touring for 40 weeks of the year and then you're on a TV show and da, 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 da. Like, I don't know if any of that is going to make me not feel mediocre. So hence the issue. Yeah. I, it sounds like no matter what, it's, it's not the thing that you're doing. It's just the feeling that you have inside. Right. And the, yeah, the, the feeling of just always being you're good, but you're not great, which you in turn take to mean that you're worthless. Correct. And that is mm. a horrific way to no. walk around the world. No, that doesn't feel good at all. No. And it's almost like there's nothing. There's been a lot of like adjustments that I feel like I'm better at like assessing like a situation um, just in terms of like being grateful for things and it's sort of what you just said. It's like, oh, I'm headlining and I've been on TV and da, da, da. And being like a lot of people would be, you know, killing themselves to do that and be grateful of the things that I've accomplished and things that I'm currently doing. Um, again, I've gotten better at that, but there's massive amount of time where it's just like, I am, I am, I will never be great. Do you ever... Do you think that you're doing things to get tangible results to make you feel like you're worthy? Shh. It, yes. But you know that those but things... But I know, yes. So it's just this weird, like... So this is a self-worth issue. Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. When have you felt, or when is the time that you felt worthy? Have you ever felt worthy? I feel worthy in moments like what like freshly off stage freshly off stage if i did well and i felt that uh the new thing i'm working on did well or whatever 
and I get off stage and I am happy with the performance, regardless of if you get the, oh, you're so funny, blah, 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 mm-hmm. regardless of whatever. If you if, had fun. If I had fun and I feel like I did well and I feel like I did my quote unquote work for that night, then I feel worth it. But that only lasts until I wake up the next day. Hmm. So it's very like, uh, fleeting. Yeah. Yeah. Where did, when did you first start experiencing that? Um, I remember a moment when my dad gave me uh, rollerblades when I was like eight or something for my birthday. And I put them on and I sucked. Obviously, because I didn't know how to rollerblade. Rollerblades are hard. So hard. So, but I was insanely pissed that I wasn't great immediately. I ripped them off, threw them on the ground. It, he, for my birthday, in front of my dad, I was like, can we curse on this thing? Yeah. Great. I was like, <laughs> Everyone says that. Right. I was like, fuck these rollerblades and fuck you for getting them for me. Fuck you for making me feel like a pile of shit. <laughs> I took them all through in front of him. My parents are divorced. Like, he's just like, you know, he flew from whatever. It doesn't matter. But, like, so I threw him down, pissed, went upstairs, went to sleep. And I woke up at 5.30 in the morning, 6 in the morning. And I was like, oh, no. I'm going to be the best rollerblader you've ever fucking seen in your life. Went down there, put them on, and rollerbladed for, like, you know, whatever months, years straight. And got good. Really, really good. So and but I've but I was never great and that like kind of. What do of, you define as great? Like doing backflips and stuff. Yeah, like a bunch of backflips. Like that would be that would be tough. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't know if I can define like great in terms of like the rollerblading community. I guess I don't know what great is, and I don't know if anyone knows what great is in terms of like rollerblading. But you. But I never felt like I was. I was great. The point is when you have. S- something and you're saying i'm not great at it i've never been great at it and you have no definition for what great is then you'll never know if you're great or not so in order for you to feel great at something you have to be able to to measure that like what does great look like who do you think is great is you're just giving yourself this like moving finish line finish line yes yeah yeah i mean that's I mean, I can define great in, like, stand-up. I can define great in, like, acting. I can define great in, like, directing. I mean, it's really hard to find a great rollerblader. I don't know anyone who fucking rollerblades. Okay. Um, what would be great to you? Because all this, a lot of that art form is, is very subjective. W- with what, stand-up? Like, stand-up, directing, acting. <sighs> I mean, I, I don't know anyone who doesn't like Meryl Streep, but... Right. Um, I mean, stand-up wise, I mean, Chappelle would be like great. What makes him great? His ability to just control the room with these like next level thoughts consistently and doing them in a like a palatable way. Um, that is like really intelligent yet infused with silly, and it's just this like beautiful like masterful ride he takes you on his own and it's and on top of it it's effortless effortless and that's that's just beautiful to me and every special that he's put out has been in my opinion great okay so is it is there um and you're comparing yourself to him i don't know if see I'm not like, look at me and look at Chappelle. I don't actively do that. But like the idea of greatness, he's in there, if that okay. makes sense. Okay. But what would greatness look like for you? <clears throat> yeah. I, I mean, listen, we could, we could go through like the accolades that would make me, I guess, feel as though I was like great – I, but that's the issue is like I know what – I know that those accolades won't 
would they will be fleeting. You're not going to internalize they will, those. No. Mm-mm. So it's like this. I need to. I need to try to figure out how to evaluate myself accurately presently Mm -hmm. because in the years that it would take me to keep climbing the stand-up ladder, I need to already have an accurate evaluation of myself prior to that. An accurate evaluation. And you want to probably a better quality of life, right? Where you're not... What shitting you, on yourself and oh yeah. yeah i mean that's that's another big part and i'm sure a lot of stand-up has is like i have this brain that won't let me do anything that that doesn't have to do with getting better at my art form like i can't watch a movie i can't watch a tv show unless i can justify it to my brain that this is making me funnier or this is making me a better director or this is making me better an actor and if i can't my brain will allow me to watch it for five minutes. And then my brain goes, the fuck are you doing, dude? What are you, you're in L.A. to watch TV? Cool, dude. Get up. Write a joke. Get on stage. What are you doing? Cool, bro. I'm sure Chappelle does this. I'm sure Bill Burr just sits on the couch and just watches. And here's the thing. They do. But my brain won't, ju- my brain won't allow me to like have those thoughts in the moment. So what would your ideal life look like? If you're, do you want a balanced life? Do you want a life where you're just kind of climbing the ladder, or what would an yeah, what would an ideal life or feeling feel like for you? Control. Mm. Control. Okay. That would be an. I mean, that's why I'm in LA and not still in New York because I know that stand up on a more grander scale there's a there's a lot less control than say creating your own you know content and developing your own ideas and that's more why i'm out here to do to kind of lean into that to kind of lean into writing and directing and uh you know pitching ideas and that type of stuff because that for the most part i understand when money gets involved you get less control but the idea is to sort of like build like a mini a mini empire like a you know a Judd Apatow or someone like that, and like Gerard's doing it right now, where you kind of like EP and in and out of ideas, and people come pitch you ideas, and so you're kind of like you have way more control than you would so in like a in the stand up avenue. Okay. Um. So that is that's the I, that's the goal. The goal is to be able to go on the road um, when I want, and to be able to control and cultivate ideas and what would that give you a sense of like what would that feel like to you once you have that you think you'd allow yourself to watch tv ever if i if i felt like i got my quote-unquote work done for the day i can i can sit and watch tv sometimes if i feel as though i got my quote-unquote work done for the day if i like uh, you know, whatever, had a writing meeting and then I had another meeting and then like I did a set and I was happy about the set that I can get off at nine, ten o'clock and they'd be like, cool, got my work done. I feel artistically, artistically fulfilled. Let me watch Frozen or whatever the fuck I'm watching. <laughs> <laughs> wow. You know, it's funny listening to that. I, it's hard for, I don't know if I have an issue too, but I'm listening to it. I'm like, that sounds pretty good. Yeah. Get your work done and then, and then go play. Yeah. <laughs> but I think where the issue comes in is just like the, what you're saying to yourself yeah. and just like the, the feeling that even no matter what I have, I'm always going to feel bad about myself. Yeah. Yeah. So what is, where does that come from? Like, what is, what's up with that? Would you talk like that to a friend? The way you talk to yourself? Um, not as harshly, but I, but I would if I felt like they needed it. Okay. Like tough love. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's, I've talked a lot to a lot of people about like my disdain for, uh, this sounds sort of harsh, but like weak minded people that drives me insane. So like, if I felt like they needed like, Hey bro, get up. You need to. You haven't been on stage in five days, and you're sitting on the couch eating potato chips. You haven't been to the gym. Like, what are you doing? Like, if I felt like they needed that, I would 
that would give that to them. Okay. But you um, wouldn't call them, like, worthless, or would you? No, absolutely not. Right. Absolutely not. So you're suggesting that I talk to myself more like I talk to my friends? Maybe. Yeah. 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 I mean, it's better. As bananas as I'm uh, kind of, like, giving it to you now, like how my brain works now, it's actually better. You know what, Michael? I think I I kind of admire the way that your brain works. I like your hustle. I like your drive. I like that you pick yourself up and 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 uh, look at things through, like, how is this going to make me better? I think that's kind of great, um, <laughs> <laughs> to be honest. I'm, like, inspired. I'm thinking about, like, when did I sit on the couch? Like, why? I need a Michael to come in and be like, what are you doing? Go write a joke. So, but I think what, what does kind of touch my heart, though, is just the the feeling of worthlessness and feeling like you have to do this in order to be a worthy person. Yeah. Cause yeah. you, you don't want to, you don't want to see me or talk to me after a day where I felt like I didn't, I wasn't artistically fulfilled, whatever that means. But if I'm not, I am, I am a horrible person to be around. Even do you ever give yourself like a, a downtime or a day to kind of relax? I can't. Or? I can't. Okay. Like I've I give myself lighter days. Okay. I give myself like all right, cool. Like, dude, you wrote four pages of the script. Like, you're good. It's three p.m. Maybe maybe go do a thing. Yeah, you're making me feel terrible. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but um, okay. But, but like. Like it's it's interesting because when I've when I've said this to be people before, I generally get that reaction. But the thing is, like the the hate mm. that I have for myself in those moments are the reason that I'm motivated. But that hate is scary. Tell me more about that. Like when I don't do as well as I want to on stage. I don't give a shit about what the audience thinks. I don't give a shit about what the comics think. I'm not fearful of the audience. I'm not fearful of the comics. I'm fearful of myself because I am insane with myself. I can sit in a bath of depression over something for a very long time. Mm. So there's only a few people in my life that know how to like, be like, hey, man, you got to dry off, bro. This is, not, this is not great. But like, yeah, so that is like, yeah, people are like, oh, I can't believe you can talk in front of people. I'm like, dude, I don't – that doesn't matter at all. Right. I'm like – I. up. You say again? I said you're past caring about that. Yeah, and I, I mean mm-hmm. – sure, sure, in the beginning I probably cared about that. But like – but I am so harsh to myself that that's, that is like – that fear allows me to be motivated. But like that's not a good – that's not a good motivator. No, that's like having an abusive parent. It, dude, I call my brain my stepdad. I try to actually try to write a joke about it, but that's everyone, so everyone funny. was like, "Hey, uh, too much. Stop." Kyle and I were just talking about this. His guy's name is what? George. George Stark. Jo- George Stark. George Stark. I kept trying to make him name it Eric for some reason, <laughs> She's but got real issues with an Eric. So I don't know what it is. I don't like Eric's. Yeah, yeah, solid evil name. But okay, so. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah, so that I, I are like, these supposed to be horrifically unfunny? Huh? Are these supposed to be like really unfunny? You know what? Because this one is super unfunny. There, these are. This is an insightful podcast. We're comedians. We're going to naturally just do that. I think okay. you're talking a little bit more animated than a normie would. So you're totally fine. Okay, I hope good. people. I don't know who's listening to this, but I hope they like it. Okay. If they don't laugh, then uh, go check out some of Michael's YouTube videos. He's very funny. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and his Instagram. Love those. Um, but, okay, so I want to, like, start giving you a little bit of homework for, for some, some things. Yeah. I love your drive. I love your work. But it seems like the, the way that you're motivating yourself is, like, hurting you and cutting you down. Mm-hmm. Like, imagine having a daughter and talking to her like that. Yeah. How you're talking to yourself and the level of hatred. Mm -hmm. And you did say it was like an abusive parent. So somewhere you've internalized some kind of negative thing that's like punishing you if you're not good enough. And then therefore you're not worthy of love. I don't know where that came from, but it's there and it's like a stepdad thing. Yeah. So what I told Kyle to do, and I don't know if this would work for you, but it's like to get another person in your head. I named him LaCroix Johnson for for, uh, Kyle. (laughs) But whoever you want to call him to say like, 
kind things to your like three kind things to yourself um for every negative mean thing you say for yourself i don't know if that's gonna work for you i think um i think for you it would help to have some coping mechanisms for when you aren't hitting where you want to hit and like allowing yourself some time to um to relax and decompress and actually gather more information. We need it. Like, this is why we sleep. We need that rest. Our mm-hmm. body's like computing it. Like it's processing right. everything. So right. you do need that as a human being. So I think you might need to change the story you have around what rest means or what watching TV means or what having a bad set means. Right. Right now it's that you're not worthy. Right. So yeah. what do you think would – so you wouldn't talk like that to a friend. You wouldn't tell a friend that, that they're unworthy. What makes them worthy as a person? Or do you, like, ha- do you see other people as worthy? Or is it that contingent upon something? Worthy in, in terms of what? Well, how you feel it. Like you said you feel worthless. Like is it no value? Is it unlovable? Yeah, it's definitely, it's definitely no – it's definitely no value. The, the I'm not lovable thing, that's – I think I'm very lovable, to be honest. <laughs> but the the value thing – I mean, they kind of feed into each other, to be honest. Like, what? Value – for me, like, value into lovable or value into love, I guess. Yes. Like, if I feel like my value is low, love – that's why I'm saying, like, you don't want to talk to me after a bad set If you feel or like your whatever. value is low. If my val- yeah, if my value is low – my love is zero that you can my love that i give or i or if people are trying to give me love mm. it's zero cuz why would you cuz essentially it's why would you love me i have zero value and why would i give love because why would why would you want love from someone who has zero value that's very yeah that's a very conditional form of love that's got to yeah. be very very painful oh yeah yeah so but it's crazy because i'm better and i'm st- it, like if you talk to me four years ago, it would be – it would, it was, it's way worse. It, it was way worse. Now it's like I have a little bit – whoever that person you said, LaCroix Johnson or whatever you said. Yeah. Did I get that right? Okay. Yeah, LaCroix Johnson. I kind of killed that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> You're lovable now. Oh, I feel good, guys. <laughs> uh, my LaCroix Johnson is getting stronger. Okay. She is there. Oh, it's a she. Okay. I don't know. LaCroix Johnson sounds like a woman to me. I thought it was a dude. I thought he was like a basketball player. Oh, really? LaCroix Johnson, to me... Like a Harlem Globetrotter. <laughs> to me, she works at... Uh, she's like the really nice woman that works at like Verizon. Okay. Like she comes in, she's like, how am I help you? Like that, what, that woman. She's so nice. And you don't even really want a phone, but like she's so nice. You're like, yo, I get a, I'm going to get a phone. Like I'm going to get... I don't Aww. even need a phone, but I'm going to get a phone. Look at you. She's like, I got three kids. You want to see them? Like the person that gives too much information. That's that's, <laughs> that's LaCroix, your LaCroix that's Johnson. Mine. That makes you that feel that then that you internalize that love. Yeah. So if she, LaCroix Johnson came up to you after a bad set and was like talking to you all sweet, would that make you feel any better? No. 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 Okay. No. <laughs> all right. <laughs> but what I'm saying is, I am. I feel as though I am at least trying to open up to LaCroix Johnson. Four years ago, I would hit her in the face. Oh, okay. So right now, you're just like, I'm not going to hit you. You're there, but I'm not really receiving anything you're saying. Right, but That's you're there. Progress. and I know. And That's you're progress. it's like you're loud in the room. You're definitely loud in, in my, if I'm like in the bedroom, in the field position. She's, she's allowed in the room, 100%. Maybe what she's saying to me is not going to really get through to me. And maybe I'm like, oh, she's showing the fuck she's talking about. But like, she's in the room. But maybe at some point, she will. Yeah. So when you're in uh, the fetal position, worthless phase, you didn't hit what you wanted to hit. What right. are the thoughts going in your head? What are you saying to yourself? What am I doing? I'm wasting my life. Uh, like, am I supposed to do this? Give me a fucking sign that I'm supposed to be doing this. Like, eight and a half years of stand up for what? Like, you know what I mean? It's like, I've yeah, been, I've, I do. Yeah, yeah. I'm talking to a stand up. You go, yeah, I get it. Uh, yeah. So it's just like you know, and then and then you start on that the horrific track of 
this person did the hint in eight and a half years, and this person did a hint in eight and a half years, which is horrendous. Never do that, obviously. Mm-mm. But that then the, the whole like rabbit hole of just just the most negative thoughts. Right. Okay. So that that's what happens. We we have a negative thing or something that happens, and then we we interpret it, and it means this. It means like you're worthless. And so from there, you're like, what am I doing? I'm not lovable. I suck. This blah, blah, blah. This yeah. person's better than you. And so we actually just talked about this with Kyle's episode. I don't know if you have that sheet, but um, I can't remember the name of the freaking book. Something about happiness. But it's a book about depression. It's a cognitive uh, behavioral therapy book. Mm-hmm. And you, what you do is you graph these thoughts. So in the first column is the situation that happened. So for you, it would be uh, had a set that I didn't like. And then the automatic negative thought, which would be I'm worthless. Mm -hmm. And then what happens after that are, um, lots of ants, a lot of automatic negative thoughts. I'm kind of getting this wrong, but, uh, like I'm, I I suck. What am I doing? This person's better than you. And then how does that make you feel Mm -hmm. like crap, like shit, right? So what you could do for that is come up with a more balanced view. It doesn't mean that you have to trick yourself and tell to like telling yourself that like, I'm the best that didn't happen, but more of a balanced view of like, that wasn't a good set, but I could learn from what I did wrong. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the, if that's LaCroix Johnson, whoever is supposed to be saying that to me, that's the type of stuff that's now getting into my brain. Okay, so you are every, able to like balance it out a little bit more. Yes. Okay. Yes, and I, and I feel like just if we're talking about strictly stage, I have leaned way more into just and we sort of talked about this before. Like I'm gonna have fun. Yeah. That's all I'm gonna do. You can have fun, audience, if you'd like. I would like you to. If you don't want to, that's fine. But I'm gonna have a good time, and that just little switch has helped tremendously because there are sort of no bad sets because like I'm having a good time and that whole, and I'm like a really silly dude. So like if I'm having a good time, it's really hard for the audience not to have a good time. Right. Cause I'm just like, guys, I'm up here. Just what's happening. Like guys, come on. Be my friend. Come on guys. Who's not going to be that person's friend. So like that has really helped just move my, like just lens of how I view stand up. Um, and even if I have like a, whatever, like a, a, a quote unquote bad set, I can get off being like, what? I, you know, I had a good time. I worked on the thing. I had a good time. It doesn't work all the time, but it's, it's, you know, that's what I'm saying. LaCroix is in the room. LaCroix is in the room. She's in the room. And she's giving you a little bit more of a balanced view. Yeah. She's like, you know, my, the, the stepdad voice, whatever his name is, let's say, call him Eric or something, whatever we call him. Eric. His name's Eric. Yeah. He's like six, eight, 300 pounds jacked. Mm-hmm. And LaCroix like. She used to be like 5'2". Now she's like 5'6". She's oh, growing. Wow. She's 5'6". Good for her. She's 5'6". She's going to the gym a lot. Growth spurt. So, yeah. So soon, you know, she's just she's going to she's gonna be defending me in a more equal way. I love that. And I yeah. love the, the visualization that you have for that. I think that will really, really help. I too. do too. And like, I never, give a, I never gave a, a, like a face and a name. And I really think that will help. Yeah. Yeah. Having that voice of the dude, you know. Yeah. You know what helps me too? Like if someone in real life upsets me or whatever, just like making fun, this sounds terrible, just like making fun of that, like where that person's coming from. You yeah. know, it's like you're coming from yeah, 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 a yeah. weak-minded place. You're coming from a very low calibrating place. So if Eric's like, what, what are you doing here? Like just make him stupid. Right. You know, and invalidate him. It's like, where are you getting this information, Eric? Who let this guy in? You know? And yeah, 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 yeah. You can use some of your silliness to com- combat that. Yeah, I'm reading know? the I'm reading. Or the, like uh, have have LaCroix Johnson be like, Oh, if he's like, Oh, you suck, you know, LaCroix could be like, Oh, we want to see pictures of my kids, you know. Right, like, right, you can't get mad at it. Right. <laughs> How you gonna get mad at her? <laughs> She's supposed to give you any time minutes, dude. <laughs> she just wants to give you any time minutes. <laughs> uh, what was I going to say? I'm reading this book, uh, d- uh, Jordan, Jordan Peterson's book. D- d- uh, what's it called? The 12, 15 Rules to Live By, whatever, whatever it's called. It's, it's really good. Um, anyways, but there's one of the rules. I'm going to butcher this. But essentially, um, it's saying that like envy of a certain person's position, like, oh, I want that person's job or I want to be Chappelle or whatever. It's he's like you don't know their life, yeah, which really helps if you break it down. He's like, yeah, okay, they're famous and they're really talented, 
but maybe they beat their wife and there's an and they're an alcoholic. As so we've like, seen this, as we've true. seen countless exactly. times. Exactly. So literally, what I've been doing it sort of relates to what you just said. It's like if I ever have those thoughts, I'm like, yeah, but I don't know their life, dude. And then, then I make don't. up. Then I make up silly Michael Blauson reasons why their life is horrendous. You know what I mean? Like, oh, uh, he, whatever. He only can get aroused when he looks at wood or like some, some weird shit. He like has a really <laughs> big problem like, makes in the forest. In yeah, I don't know. You know what I mean? Like just weird. <laughs> Instead of like, he just has a cocaine problem. Just like something weird that makes me giggle. Yeah. 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 I think that's really smart. Yeah. And that's helpful. And also we don't, a, a lot of times you, you've heard this story a million times. People can have it all and they still don't feel good. They don't have that thing. So, it's good to figure out a way to generate that feeling within yourself, whether it's like connecting to your spirituality, right. taking your time off, spending time like, you know, self care is like a big buzz thing right now. Yeah. Taking care of yourself, resting, exercising, which you do. I yeah. mean, eating healthy, all that. Right. Yeah. The Ways gym, to, the to gym really better. helps. If I don't go to the gym, it's a, it's a, it's also a nightmare. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's like, if I don't go for like two days, I'm like, why am I so angry? Ooh. And then I go and I go, oh, there we go. I'm That's how now. I feel about my morning pages. I have to do my morning pages every day or I feel cranky. And eat. I get mad that I have to eat multiple times I a day. I hate eating. We never, <laughs> how do we never talk about this? We talked about how we get angry if we're hungry. Totally. But yeah. I hate eating. It's like, every give me day. a pill, bro. <laughs> I don't care about food. Everyone's like, have you tried the new hot? Th- I don't care. I don't care about the, the the hot dog that's infused with like Jolly Ranchers. I don't care. Ew. Give me a who cares? Just give me a pill yeah. so I'm not hungry and enough calories and I'm good. It's so weird. It's like I don't plan for food, even though I've done it literally every day of my life, multiple times a day, Sometimes. and I'm like surprised every single time I'm hungry. I'm like I'm I'm hungry again. Yeah. I think I just want to eat and not have to deal with it. Yes, it's just so, an annoyance. Sleep too. So I don't if like. Anyone it. knows how to do that? I love sleep. Sleep can get it. I don't I just, like the fact that I have to sleep. Okay. I, I wish that I, I didn't have to eat and I didn't have to sleep. I, I like sleeping because I like the dreams. They're like free movies and you know how cheap I am. So I don't dream a lot. You don't? Mm-mm. I don't dream a lot. I've been like using CBD recently and that actually helps me dream. But like I don't, use, I don't generally dream. Like ever. You dream. You just don't remember I it. I just dream when I'm awake. <laughs> You know what I mean? Do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, I do. Do yeah. you? Yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> you have dreams as a human being. Okay, so Kyle, where are we? Oh, 35. Oh, well, thanks for giving me the heads up 10 minutes ago. Up on he's always on his laptop. I don't know what he's doing. I'm trying to not be a weird lawyer staring two people having a conversation. Okay. Could you, if you guys hear Kyle, Kyle is back recording my podcast. I haven't done it on my phone this time. So <laughs> very excited. So, okay. So, Michael, we'll wrap this portion up and then I'm going to ask you about your creative process. Is there anything in particular that helped you or that you found like a takeaway from this? I genuinely think that giving that woman a name is helpful. Because okay. I'm a very, like, visual person. Oh, okay. So, like, that really helps. And even giving, like, I always just label him stepdad. But that's such, like, a, just, who, what is that? Yeah. That's such, like, a general way. It's like saying captain or yeah. something. Yeah. Who is that person? Yeah, yeah. Or how about we give him a name? Mm-hmm. And how about we, even if I, even me saying he, he's 300 pounds in 6'8". Like, at least now I have a visual of what he he's wearing a wife beater, but he's like he's he look, totally wearing. He, he a looks life real beater. good though. It's like stained. Oh, oh, it's horribly stained. But he, <laughs> but to me, like he's like he looks good. Yeah, he's, he might have like a receding hairline, but his, he's like jacked. He's like okay. he's looking great. Okay, um, so that gives him more uh, more clout too it, in your head. Exactly. Yeah. So, but in my head, even labeling the the woman, that really helps. Yeah. So that that is a huge takeaway from this. So another tool too, since he's like jacked and like has this like sense of authority from it, you could start making him look a little less someone you would really listen to or yeah, take, like take serious. Too many just like quesadillas and he's not really going to the gym. Yeah, much, it's like, much dude, beer. I'm not listening to you. You don't even work out. Yeah, you're, you're kind of disgusting. Good. Yeah. You have a just... Samsung. <laughs> well, I'm really into phones today for you some really reason. <laughs> Verizon Samsung. I don't know. Just use his name and you can get a discount at either one of those providers. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. So giving that person a name and also uh, similarly like with the the worthiness thing, When if, the, if you can even think about a time where you felt especially worthy maybe with your mom or a certain family member or someone mm-hmm. that just makes you feel unconditionally loved, having uh, – a visual of that person talking to you or something like that. It could be LaCroix Johnson or, or she could be like yeah. a culmination of a lot of people that you 
that make you feel good and unconditionally loved. I know we're we're wrapping up, so let's not get into this. I know we have we're time limit. The unconditional love thing, I don't I don't believe that person. Because you're gonna you're gonna give me value regardless. So that to me is that doesn't it's mean it's not anything love to me. unless you earn it. Sure, yes. You have to earn love, basically. Yeah, I mean I like unconditional love. But that unconditional love type of person is not going to help me in that realm because okay. you're going to say I'm good at basketball, mom, regardless of if I score one point or 30. What if they said – what if they didn't say you were good at it but they were like it's okay? You don't give a shit. I don't care. It won't, that, won't, that won't help me. <laughs> okay. All right. Does that, does, doesn't that make sense? Yeah, sort of? it does. I mean I feel the same way in relationships. It's like the love feels better if it's earned. Um, but I know it's a little different from what, from what you described in terms of like accomplishments and stuff, but yeah, I can, I can see that, but just finding something to combat the feelings of unworthiness sure, because it shouldn't be contingent upon doing good. It's the most dangerous like system to be set up in your brain. Yeah. But you, at least you're aware that it's there and you're taking new steps to build a new system. Yeah. And then the less you pay attention to the old system, the more it's going to break down and you're going to have a stronger system for it. Yeah. 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 Okay, cool. And if I could, I don't, can't remember that the name of that damn book, but I'm going to put it on the Facebook group and, and the Amazon page about the, the happiness, the cognitive behavior therapy stuff. Cause that works. Like, I'm a, is it the book that everyone's reading? Like I'm a happiness. Cause I'm a badass, badass. No, I'm no, a no, happy no. Guy. That's a totally different one. Okay. That's a Jen Chinchero book. Or that's a good book. Like you're a, it? you're a badass. You're, you're a badass. So believe it, honey, or whatever the title <laughs> is. <laughs> yes. Let me do it like that. And then there's another one that's like, you're a badass at making money. I read that one too. Yeah. 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 Yeah, that helped. Is it, is it they always, you know what? They always help while I read them, and then the minute I'm done with it, I'm like, "All right, what's the next thing that's wrong with me?" And I just, I know, dude, that's that's forget. what I mean. I read, uh, I read the Four Agreements. Oh yeah. Did you ever read it? Did you agree with them? Only one of them. No, I, I agree with all of them. They're, okay. Did you read the book? I am familiar. They didn't dude, really. It, it's but it's exactly what you said. I read it and I was like, Tch. "Yep." Well, this is my life mantra. And then as soon as I close the book, I go, I don't even remember the first one, to be honest. I, I, it's like when you watch a documentary so and you're like true. so excited to tell someone, they go, oh, what's it about? You go, it's the, the polar bears. And they, but I don't remember, but I'm really, I know I'm passionate about the idea that I forgot. <laughs> I know it made me feel good. And yeah, I, in the yeah. moment, but I don't remember anything. That's why I respect people who are like activists. It's like, man, you remembered. You remember to be passionate you're, all the time? Yeah. What a nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> you're pa- you're passionate about you what you do what you do and that's effortless for you so I guess it depends on the per- person yeah 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 all right well this part has been fun let's, yeah let's go into the creative process a Boo. and we're back several seconds later um, <laughs> <laughs> can I open this record it's gonna be loud I was kind of concerned that oh, you okay. hadn't been drinking the Lacroix that oh, I'm sorry. And you know what? This is symbolic too. He's drinking Lacroix. Lacroix Johnson. Lacroix, will you sponsor this podcast? I think they're going to after this. I think so. So um, I'm just going to ask you a couple questions about creativity or Give it success to me. or whatever. So think about something in your life that you're like an accomplishment you've had, whether it's being booked on a certain thing or having a really great set or some major achievement that you had. Can you think of a mindset shift that you had before that happened? Right before it happened? I really do think, and this is what we talked about before, so this might bore everyone, like the I am going to have fun. Okay. That was a big, huge – because in the beginning of my stand-up, that's what I was doing, but I wasn't conscious of it. And then middle of it, of my career, whatever, I lost it, and then I, I, I don't know how, but I just found it again, and that allowed me just to be – just to lean into my silliness and then that – that's how I'm funny. So like I was being very true to myself and maybe that's it. Just mm. being as true to yourself as possible and not look at other, someone else and be like, I want to be them. I want to be them. It's like, no. Who are you? Because only you can do you. So then that's what you're going to do. And that – as soon as I loon, leaned into like Michael Blouse and how I do stand-up is when – in the last like two, three years is when – you know, a lot of just very nice compliments from people that I respect or even just like, you know, bookers of things started happening more frequently. Okay. 
Um, I love that. Yeah. Being being authentic and having fun. I think those are really, really important things. You can't be anyone else. Yeah. But trying to do like heady stuff if you're not a heady person. Like if you're a yeah. silly person, be a fucking silly person and own it. Um, okay. I, I'm, I'm, I, I am pleased with that answer. Uh, oh, good. What if you, you have weren't, pleased what if you me. weren't pleased? What happens then? I wouldn't say anything. Okay. <laughs> um, okay. So next question. What is your stand up? You write, and you're also an actor. You do mm-hmm. really funny Instagram videos. You guys have to see these. <laughs> the, the last one you did with the, the river dancing one, yeah. I was, like, crying. <laughs> <laughs> like, the close-up <laughs> shots of the vacuum. <laughs> I was dying. Thank you. That was my favorite. So please look up. What's your Instagram? Uh, Blau Comedy. B-L-A-U Comedy. Yeah, look those videos up. So um, when you're making videos or mm-hmm. acting or directing or writing stand-up, what does your creative process look like? Like, if you, you can just pick one from those like if you're writing stand-up do you sit at a computer and write a joke or do you riff or Um, my creative process is i have a coffee and i watch about five minutes of stand-up any stand-up uh stand-up that is ish around where i'm at just like just more silly stuff um just to hear laughter and just to be like and just be like ooh, i want to do that you ever like watch a movie as a kid and it's like whatever like, like uh, superman and super, you're like and you're, i'm a fly dude yeah, i'm a be superman too <laughs> it's like i had that a bunch as a kid so me watching like two to three five minutes of stand-up from someone that's like dope and who i respect and then i just hear the laughter and i go oh that i remember my love of it okay cool i love it i love it and then i have that love and then i get up and just start walking um and i keep outside, my outside inside. okay and i keep my uh headphones in with nothing on and then I just start talking out bits, so it looks like I'm on the phone. <laughs> so I just start talking. <clears throat> I just start talking out bits, um, and even just kind of going rehearsing stuff I'm working on. And then me walking and me kind of riffing and me being in that like love of stand up mode always gets new ideas and new like riffs within older bits or within the stuff I'm working out or even like new stuff. That is fantastic. Yeah, and then I like if I get in something new, then I'll stop. I write, I write in my phone. So I'll stop, just write it quickly in my phone, and then I'll keep walking and start from the beginning with like the new section or whatever. Do you, re- do you ever record into your phone like audio or you no. just no. So no. you're so you you have a coffee, mm-hmm. you put on some stand up to yep. hear laughs and remember yep. your love for it, which yep. is brilliant. I've never heard of that before. <laughs> Bra- Blavariant. I tried to combine your I, name. I, that we, was, everyone that knew what was, you were doing. Terrible. Yeah, yeah. Bla- it's I, bla- it's bra- I can't even do it with my own name. It's hard. It's, it's hard. brilliant, Stein. Bam. Boom. We did it. Okay. We did it together as a unit. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you, so you, you watch the five minutes of stand up to get into the love of it, and then yep. you put your headphones in so you don't look like a crazy person. Right. Walk around your neighborhood yep. and just start saying bits out loud. Where are these bits coming from? Are you just like, look at that dog? You know what? I'm a dog. You know, or what? <laughs> that's one of my bits, actually. <laughs> you miss sound effects and act outs, but that's pretty much my bit. <laughs> Man, I love dogs. Y'all ever know dogs? <laughs> It's LaCroix Johnson's son. <laughs> man, y'all would have bits you like, man. Dogs is, man, they crazy. They're different than cats, though. <laughs> They're different than cats, though. <laughs> Thank you for putting that caveat. Okay. That yeah. cat caveat. If y'all didn't there. know. Oh, cat caveat. Meow. Talk to me. <laughs> <laughs> you make me act so silly. Okay. So, so what? where do those bits come from? Um, They come, like, I'll have, like, a... Uh, they, the ideas generally don't come from the walk. They'll come from like if I'm in an Uber and a, an idea will hit my head or if I'm in a conversation with someone and an idea will hit my head and I'll just write it like a brief little note in my phone um, and then I'll take those brief little notes and then that's when I go on my journey of walking whatever the next day. <clears throat> so like they sort of – the bits, ideas come from like life. Uh-huh. And then I, they're hashed out. Step two is the walk. Step two is a walk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally, I totally. love that. I love that. That's such a clear process. Yeah. And that you have a thing. So you do. It sounds like you do this like every day. I I try. Like every, I tr- and if you I, don't, uh, yeah. You are. Yeah, I try to. Yeah. I try to. At least, at least for like, at least for like twenty, thirty minutes a day. I, I like. I. That's yeah. brilliant. You're getting exercise. You're yeah. I mean, you're getting outside. Good. You feel good. You're out like getting I some vitamin that. D. I'm gonna yeah. try that. Gonna Please do. do. I tell everyone to to walk and do it. Walking helps so much, dude. 
I like I like to put on my headphones when I go on walks and just listen to music and just imagine myself performing. Right, but that's just me. No, it's not just I, you. I'm I sure a lot of people love that. Okay, do I have what other questions do I usually ask Kyle? Do you remember? Those are like the big. Those two. are the the big two. He was very efficient. Okay. Oh, my well, bad. Usually people have like longer answers. I can just um, riff some more no, answers. No, not necessarily. Usually we run out of time, and so I only get a chance for those two because those are like my two favorites. Mm. Um, where, well, where can people find you? Uh, people can just find me on Instagram at, at Blau Comedy, uh-huh. and then uh, my like link to my website and all the shows and stuff. And your shows are on there, and he tours yep. all over the country. So come out to it. shows and guys. the world. <laughs> well, the world. if you think about it, I do. You do. <laughs> you were like in Australia or New Zealand or something cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah Australia. Yeah, yeah. So uh, there's that. I can't think of anything else right now. I'm sorry. It's You've okay. Been such, I think this has been wonderful. This is so fantastic. Thank you so much for letting me inside your head. Of course. I apologize again about the arm thing. Even though you don't want an apology, so I apologize for apologizing, and you've been fantastic. Thank you. Oh, you know what? What? You're welcome. Oh, come on. <laughs> My self-worth is at an all-time high. Oh, good. <laughs> uh, LaCroix Johnson, shout out to you. Also, you guys, if you like this podcast, or even if you don't, just like rate it five stars, share it, take a screenshot of it, sub, comment, so it comes up higher, and I love you. Thank you.